since it's summer time and lot of uh, hollywood blockbusters are being released so yesterday i watched the mission impossible dead reckoning part 1 and it was a wonderful movie because uh, tom cruise never fails to amaze us with his super stunts and with his oh indeed uh, he's a phenomenal yes, actor yes yes I mean, and his, yes and his uh, stunts were you know outlessly you know outsizely magnificent and because of the plot the story was very enticing and i think it was bit long it so was so hazra by any chance are you into the horror movies as well yeah i i can watch horror movies but i mostly Recently, into the is uh, fine this art. insidious red door the final part yeah, has yeah, yeah. been released so what is your take on the movie i haven't seen the movie about and uh, so so i'm morely into the tom cruise films because you know he is a huge huge star and he does a lot of hard work into producing his films so i saw his top gun 2 which was also a huge huge hit and uh, i think tom cruise is also rescuing the hollywood cinema because of the ott platforms like netflix night hulu like others um they are also denting the cinemas nowadays and it's not just the hollywood it's across the world we are witnessing and the also same thing and also hazra we also came across this controversy in the hollywood yes, side where yes. we are witnessing the actors were protesting yes. against yes. their wages so yes, how yes. do you see this yes. i mean is it logical or is it absurd I mean no it's not absurd so we talked about the uh, strikes yesterday in our program so we will have this conversation but I think when we come to the movie of the uh, Tom Cruise Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning it was part 1 and I think the part 2 is going to be released in the June next year so it was a huge uh, amazing movie and uh, again the plot was hinge around a thing called entity in which the artificial intelligence goes rogue and everyone every government is after that entity to control it because controlling the artificial intelligence means you are controlling the entire world there is this dominance the hegemony and wow. we feel this concept has been again and again incorporated into the tom cruise movies but uh, again looks like you are a huge fan of tom cruise yes. and you're into a lot of not. movies i don't know who is not are you a fan <laughs> of the Cru tom cruise because he's a huge huge actor and obviously his cinematic performances are amazing Definitely. yes he has a matchless performance yes. i must yes. agree on this yes. thing yes yes uh, so again uh, now we turn to our new top stories because obviously we're going to discuss about the movies in the coming year so the co commander conference has vowed to fully support the strategic initiatives planned by the government for the revival of the economy by providing all possible technical and management support for the overall good of the people of pakistan the 258 core commander conference was held at the ghq in rawalpindi under the leadership of army chief general sayed asim munir The forum held was a prize about the government's economic revival plan and the role of army in uplifting the agriculture, IT, mining and mineral and defense production sectors under the ambit of special investment facilitation council. And we are very hopeful about the coming future prospects of our country and we are hopeful that our country's leadership um is doing its best in order to uplift the country Definitely. and especially with the score command conference uh this concept and this idea has been again reiterated and i believe hazra that the current incumbent government is actually taking practical yes. steps rather than being theoretical i mean we saw the True. previous government as well and it, it was all the theoretical steps that were being taken yes. nothing was practical i mean the economy it just came down to the brunt of being default true true so, uh, true yeah. so so uh, yes again we are very hopeful about the coming situation so moving on to another top story which is about pakistan uh, what 221 for 5 at stumps in reply to sri lanka's 300 12 on the second day of the first cricket test in gale pdv sports hd is telecasting the match live earlier sri lanka were balled out for 312 runs in their first innings in reply pakistan were 221 for 5 in their first innings when the match stopped due to rain 
So Ali, are you uh, a huge fan of cricket or, or which sports are you particularly well, interested in? Well, honestly speaking, I'm not at all a sports <laughs> person and <laughs> not a huge fan of cricket, but Ooh. definitely I'm a huge fan of books. I am into the literature and I am also into the painting as well. I mean, okay. for me, playing with colors is the best way of unwinding myself. That's very true and I think there are different form of the expressions that an individual can give and we talk about it, right? So painting is one, uh, I mean reading is one, poetry is one and photography, what not, right? And I believe that social interaction, yes. interacting with the right people, yes. with the right company is an amazing way to unwind yourself because That's you true. know, you get to learn a lot from the other people as well. That's true. That's true. Uh, so let's talk about someone who's also into the painting, who is also a, a multimedia professor. A famous in the educationist, first place, a professor at Fatma Jinnah University, yes. a, a multimedia arts practitioner, and what not more. And a graphic designer, of course, like Ali was mentioning about, you know, the self-expression through painting and what not. So we are very glad that we have been joined by an educationist herself. She happens to be Ms. Raksha Batool. Assalamu alaikum and thank you so much for joining our show. Barikum salam and uh, it's a pleasure to meet you and it's a wonderful show and I'm being honored to be here. Well, it's an I'm honor there. for us to have you Thank on our you. show because you uh, I'm so excited to discuss a lot more interesting things uh, from you oh, about the Mr. digital Mr. education. Mr. Rasha, you have a really amazing CV and you have a lots of feathers in your cap, right? So why don't you explain us? Uh, how did you well venture into this calligraphy, into graphic <laughs> designing, into multimedia artists and, and what is the particular form of expression that you would like to express yourself uh, through? Actually, um, uh, when I was a young student, I was uh, actually told to become a doctor as we all know yeah, that yeah, in yeah. our society uh, that, that a lady should be a doctor or an in a boy should be an engineer somewhat like this or join army yes, because yes. you can get a good career in that. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> uh, I was never thinking of um, me as an educationist, as a teacher, I never thought of like this. But um, uh, somehow when I was uh, learning my syllabus for medicine, I actually used to draw and then I start realizing that when I draw, then uh, it is registered in my mind. Wonderful. So I started, um, I uh, refused to read the textbook, I just draw and just write, label the uh, diagram and then So you were write. never a textbook person? Yes, I was never a textbook per person, but that's why I was suffering because the yes. board and the, all the teachers wants me to write in the specific way in which they have been told. <laughs> Right. So um, <laughs> I was like uh, a very creative person. Wonderful. So I switched my field. I turned into um, um, a university. I came across an ad, university advertisement. And I said it is like multimedia practitioners, like you can become a computer arts person. What is that? Okay. that? I started exploring that. And luckily, I got admission in computer Wonderful. arts department. Wonderful. And um, uh, there I get the full chance to avail all the opportunities and explore all my talent and all the capabilities whatever I can perform, in which direction I want to go, uh, they have uh, given me liberty and I think whatever I am, it's because of my skill and my uh, teachers and all the institutes that, uh, that have actually groomed me. Yeah, I think it's, it's very wonderful that you have found your groove and it's very, uh, I think, uh, very rarely that you come across people who actually find the groove or the, the talent that they want to polish their self mm. in. Because most of the time, like you mentioned, it's uh, either engineer, doctor <laughs> or army, which is preferred and as a I also profession. believe, Hajra, that, you know, it is also uh, not less than a miracle that you, you know, realize that uh, what you actually want to do true. in your life true. and the skill yes. that you want yes. to unleash. That's mm. very true. You need to be very clear about it. That's very true. true. And I think you get the clarity as you grow up. Sometimes mm. you get the clarity when you are a student and sometimes and later in the life you need but to But I believe somehow, unfortunately, yes. uh, the clarity, it gets suppressed. Some people that are true. unable to get true. the clarity due to certain family pressures, true. pressure true. from the schools, etc., etc. Yeah, so I mean, you need to uh, earn the bread and you need to work hard exactly. and sometimes the profession are not very lucrative in the okay. first place so let's come to our topic which is about the merger of technology yeah. and the education right so you are an educationist a lot of educationists are very concerned with the development of chat gpt right so nowadays if you uh, give any assignment to the students they turn to the chat gpt <laughs> and they would print out the pages and they yes. wouldn't exercise yes, their yes. intellectual yes. faculties and that's very concerning to us right yes so uh, how do you deal with it how do we uh, learn to live with that 
as as we all know that information technology in the development and IT department actually has uh, made our life better. Uh, in terms of facilitating, making our um, lifestyle more convenient, easier and more efficient. But on the s other side, we see that uh, the students, when we, when we talk about education, mm. uh, the cognitive level of the student, the mind uh, generating solutions for the problems and for the upcoming challenges, actually that talent is being uh, not used because That's of this uh, advance. Yes, it's being suppressed due to advancement in technology. It is very easy to copy and paste things. That's it true. is very easy to get the idea, not using your mind. You're not actually a problem solving person. You are just following the trend. That's uh, true. And if you're following the trend, I think we should be looking towards that we should become a trend setter instead of a uh, trend follower. That's we true. are actually Agreed. following the trends and blindly we are following that. True. And uh, the biggest challenge for the teachers who are is, uh, teaching at, at any level, hmm. uh, either they are uh, teaching at uh, school level, university level, college level or even home tuitions. Um, they are facing this kind of uh, challenge that the information technology not just have made the life easier, but they have actually given uh, a huge kind of challenge to on the True. teacher's point of view. True. Uh, because it is very difficult to uh, cop su such kind of topics and such kind of uh, assignments that is not being copied or not being downloaded easily mm. on the internet, available on the internet to just go and search and click and download the uh, whole assignment. It is not the way that we want students to groom. True. True. We want them to be a creative person. We want them true. to be a active, critical thinker and to contribute towards the society. That's true. But yeah. Daraksha, if you know, as you are mentioning about uh, this loss of creativity among the students with the arrival of these apps, so it is indeed a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. But now, how should we deal with the problem? The problem is there, but how to solve it? Okay. Uh, the problem, when we identified the problem, now it's a time to rectify, to make a plan according to the problem and then come up with the multiple solutions or come up with this conclusion. What uh, I have concluded from my experience that we should give that kind of uh, assignment that is specifically to the environment based, mm -hmm. to your con uh, cultural context and we should re uh, stick to the roots of our own culture. True. Because if you go to the internet that all the uh, uh, context is all about the West. True. Because we uh, lack the context that, that is specifically related to this area. Our ethnicity is missing. We should deal with that kind of problems that is specifically related That's to our, our context, to, right. the, to this environment. If I'm living in this uh, twin city, Rawalpindi Islamabad, the uh, assignments that the context must be related to this specific area, right. the student uh, where uh, he or she belongs to. That's that true. is the first way that we can um, identify uh, the problem and then we can come up with the solution. Definitely. Another solution can be like this, that we can uh, Google about, where we can uh, uh, go or roam about and uh, do the surfing on our own self then uh, before giving the assignment. And true. then uh, we can twist the words and we can change the, that kind of uh, right. assignment into a different a different kind of assignment. We are talking yes. about the digital education right now. Yes, digital. So, uh, tell us a little a, a bit about these digital libraries that are available. Uh, digital on the libraries internet. actually, um, it, uh, in before COVID, it this uh, phenomenon was very new in Pakistan. Uh, when COVID str uh, strike in Pakistan, uh, and everything has to switch to the online medium, so the there was a need that everyone need to get informed and get right. updated mm -hmm. with the technology and get uh, equipped with the latest trends. Even those um, uh, big, uh, citizens, bigger yeah. citizens, the adults that they Seniors don't, they students. have some yeah. kind of reluctancy towards information technology, they don't want to go into the more into the digital world. Right. They were more into conventional and traditional style. Okay. They don't want to prefer to uh, go into the digital world, but it was a liability on them as well. 
True. Especially it was on the teachers, the teachers who have, who have been teaching right. for 20 years, 30 years, they have never gone into the digital world. True. But it was their they liability to, the yes, to go uh, into yes. the digital world and explore the world and then come up with the new uh, trends that was actually being followed in the COVID period. Yes, yes. But so, the Raksha, uh, I mean, having this conversation about yourself and especially your calligraphy. So, we have uh, your work which will be displayed on the screen mm -hmm. and we would really want uh, you to explain so what sort of work are you indulging in. So, calligraphy is not a very easy pie yes, uh, right. to digest in no, the first place, right? Yes, yes. It's uh, very so, creative so and it's, it's very, very creative. difficult so, for So, can you explain us what it is about okay. and, and how did you came across this idea? of having the calligraphy and in, uh, in general when you paint uh, a calligraphy how much time does it take okay this is actually uh, i have tried to merge two mediums that okay. was actually actually graphic design i'm a graphic designer oh, wonderful. wonderful and uh, that is calligraphy is actually done by hand That's true. but i have tried to do all uh, digitally Right. This, this is this all uh, uh, art pieces has been done digitally on computer right. Right. by using graphic tablet and different uh, softwares, uh, graphic True. softwares. And then uh, what I have uh, tried to explain that whatever is in uh, in the world right. is all related to Almighty Allah. That's oh, you have to uh, go back to. So uh, I've now I, I explore different uh, mediums, different techniques, yes. different styles in digital paintings and different different digital sketching. That's so true. I've uh, been, uh, been transferring this knowledge to my students as so well. So Daraksha, how did you Wonderful. acquire this skill of the digital calligraphy, digital painting? I mean, it's fabulous. Thank you so much. Uh, it was actually, I started by hand. And right. then I, when I explored the different softwares, the applications on uh, computer. So what are the most popular softwares that are used for the digital calligraphy and the painting? Uh, mostly uh, Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop right. uh, uh, is very commonly right. used. Illustrator has been commonly used. And different, uh, it is not just the software actually, it is the mind. Right. That actually you draw in the mind and then you come up with the artwork. That's true. There's a complete process. First, you get the idea, and then you make the rough sketches, and all the uh, through the that rough sketches, you came across a different creative things. So, do you put your emotions in your yes, digital exactly paintings the expression and in your and calligraphy emotions. as yes, well? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, exactly. if you're melancholic or if mm. you're happy. Yes. So, do you put those yes, emotions? Uh, not just happy happiness and not just the joyfulness it is always about the sadness your right. inner depression depression your, inner your frustration, frustration well. and I the mean catharsis the colors which you choose to yes. paint a painting yeah, you can see my a color palette is very bright that's true pop yeah, i have sort of all yeah. the pop up colors and all the very brighting uh, brightness and all the funkiness is there yes. just because that uh, that kind of uh, expression i want to give that we have just limited ourselves with the calligraphy that it has to be very sober yeah. Right. And very sophisticated, no doubt. Either it, it has to be very sober or it has to be very yes. intense in the yes. looks. Yeah, I think that's a wrong impression because if you observe the Muslim architecture, mm, so the yes. colors are very bright. Very like bright and yes, very, and very funky. Uh, funky. Pop art but, sort uh, of uh, but to some extent, we want to relate it yes. with, uh, with very, it is a serious thing, no doubt. It's a very right, sacred right, thing as well. Right. And uh, you, you know that we are Muslims and we believe mm. that... Uh, all our uh, deeds are belong to this rightness and definitely uh, the 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 connection yes, with the higher. Higher. So, so let's talk about the technology and education and especially after the COVID, post COVID, we have seen that businesses, education, they have learned to integrate the technology, yes. um, especially the, the artificial intelligence into mm. their education academia mm. or the curriculum in the first place, right? But I do remember that there was this time because I was also a student at that time when the COVID hit and it was not a very pleasant time, of course, across yes, exactly. the world, yes. right? Yes. Very uh, challenging. Yes, yes. And, and I remember I was pursuing my degree at that time. I just got finished with my coursework. And, and, and it I was think definitely student, very difficult, and especially difficult. when we, you know, switched to the digital learning, Hajra. It's very the challenging because classes, you cannot it was flourish very in that environment mm. in the first place, right? Because uh, when you are in the classroom, there's this change of environment. You're interacting with your peers and you, you have the professor in the and you can see the expression of the professor and professor can also judge your expression mm. right so if you can see if someone is not interested mm. you can evoke his interest through invoking different um, mediums in the first place right uh, but now a lot of education institutions have uh, started to incorporate that mm. form of mm. uh, i would say education into their curriculum mm. so what are your opinion and thoughts about it i mean do you feel that it's wise to have this e-learning in the first place because um, i think learning is not just about memorizing a lot mm. of stuff yes, it's not it's just about 
short memory. Yes, confidence, mm. interacting, yes. learning new things. I think it's about day. gaining the skill That's as well true. and uh, educating yourself. Yes, as sure far as uh, the technology is concerned, yes, we need to update ourselves according to the latest trends. If we don't want uh, that uh, technology to get indulged and get invaded in our so, uh, in the social life, we will be uh, back in this in in the cave ages. True. If we can't live without it. That's this is true. what I want to say. Right. That's true. Uh, when you are uh, dealing with the technology, there are certain kind of limitations as well. Hmm. And we need to follow that overindulgence uh, and overuse of technology can be harm, um, harm, harmful. That's and uh, I, I must say this, that when we were actually learning and we were actually executing at the same time during the That's COVID true. time. That's true. When we were executing, when we were learning and there were a chance that we might have skipped few essential elements as well. Yes. During that learning phase that we haven't uh, defined our time limits, right. we haven't defined our uh, health hazards of, of technology Very true. and we haven't decided wh where to sit and how yes. to sit in front of the computer, true. the bad postures and uh, the uh, health issues like vision problems and that psychological problems, uh, depression Lack of mobility, yes. and actually the most problem that I have been uh, noticing was actually social isolation. Yes, yes. I and think I that believe was the that biggest uh, we yes. have become a little too much convenient mm. after this, uh, you know, phase of yes. COVID-19. Yes. Once, you know, you're telling me that we are learning as well, yes. we're executing as well. Mm. So I think uh, somehow we are not ready to come out of our comfort zone that's, as well. That's mm. very true. And I think that is the challenge or the fallacy of the modern age or the digital age in the first place. Yes, we need to talk about it. But now uh, let's talk about the merger of technology and the education. And since you belong to the fine arts department, uh, and your area of expertise lies in that. So I think across the world, if you go to the museums, to the art mm. places, you will see that how beautifully they have merged the technology, digital, technology um, with world, the yes. arts and with the, I think, the things from the past. We, we don't see that sort of incorporation here in Pakistan, right? Mm. Especially with the museums, because mm. um, museums are the places where we can find a past, right? And, and also sort of our identity makers in oh, the first definitely. place, right? So how do you think that we as a nation can grow up and especially focus on our museums and merge the technology, education mm. and the arts in the first place? Actually, we are, it, um, these days, it is the merger of science and arts. We are, we need to accept this thing that de the technology must be there if you are creating anything. Either you're trying to create a, a conventional or very traditional style you have opted to paint by hand, but it must be executed somewhere. Right. Digitally, you can you can express, you can exhibit your work digitally by using the social media apps. Right. The apps are available. And now I must say that things are changing in Pakistan as well. True. Different art galleries have uh, given space to this kind of digital, uh, tra digital medium so that we can exhibit the yes. work of uh, uh, digital world. That's we, can exp uh, we can express digitally. We can actually it was uh, not there uh, a few decades back, uh, back but That's now uh, things are changing. Let's hope for the better and yes. in, uh, we can we definitely can. also uh, uh, Ms. Daraksha, I just want to know that uh, there is also a digital divide. There is a debate True. of haves and haves not. There are True. people who are not aware of the ICT tools. So what are the challenges for them? Uh, as How I have well are they lagging behind? First of all, the, uh, the, uh, the, the thing is that it, it is actually in your mind. First, okay. you need to convince yourself okay. that either you want to be on the updated level. True. Right. You want to be with the time. Right. You want to see yourself with the uh, upcoming generations. You want to stand with them. Either right. you want to stand a bit side right. on, on the side and you don't want to get merged. Right. Because the technology is everywhere. We can't uh, minus ourselves. We can't so minus don't our you technology. Think that uh, lack of guidance. Yes, lack of guidance. Uh, yes, you know, yes. We need awareness. Barrier. Awareness. The main thing is awareness right. and right. then uh, your inner persuasion right. that actually matters that right. you need to persuade yourself and you need to convince that this thing has to be there. We have to live with it. That's true. That's and true. we need to adopt this kind of. So uh, do you believe you're talking about awareness? Do you think that awareness is form of an empowerment? Yes. 
awareness is a fo form of empowerment. If, if uh, I talk about the ladies and uh, I'll talk about the women education and if the women want to get empowered, they can use these tools. These mm -hmm. world is just a click away That's by true. this technology. You can use, you can access anybody, you can uh, uh, contact any person, relevant person, uh, I'm talking to the person in the office. Um, we are saying there are so many WhatsApp group in my true. phone. True. That's very true and I think Ali, we are very uh, hopeful about the future because considering the fact that Pakistan has 60% of the young generation and they are all very much, uh, I think, merged into the technology and the smartphones and uh, Pakistan is the fastest growing market when it comes mm. to the digital Definitely. technology in the first place. Definitely. But thank you so much, Mr. Raksha, for gracing us, for it having this have uh, wonderful sure. conversation, the cross-pollination of the ideas that was very wonderful to have you here and we will keep looking uh, to your presence here in our uh, show in the future as well so we are going on a short break and after that we have a very interesting conversation uh, around which we are going to develop our program so don't go anywhere after a short we'll break be right we'll back good morning Pakistan Good morning and, and welcome, welcome back. back. Welcome back to our <laughs> show. And we were having a very interesting and wonderful conversation about schooling, about education, its merger with technology, what are the challenges, artificial intelligence, chat GBT, which has irritated the educators a lot. Because and has hindered the creativity of the youngsters <laughs> as well. That's very true. And I think uh, this lagging behind the men mental faculties of the lot of the students and kids. So now we are going to talk about, since our uh, topic is also linked to the education, specifically we are going and to focus I believe that this topic is very close to your heart because I do see your Instagram stories. It is all about <laughs> education, yes. books, books, books. Yes, yes, <laughs> books, 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 because I am really fond of books, uh, which is about the homeschooling. So, Ali, I remember when I was growing up, uh, and especially when we talk about the schooling era of our phase, uh, of our student life, uh, I remember I loved hanging out with my friends. So, I never oh, missed definitely. the books. The I never missed the lectures. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, was just the, the key playing. Part. Yes, it was playing around in the ground. It was interesting. I believe for myself, you know, school was a little less of a learning place, yes, but yes. a more of a, you know, place to play and interaction interaction with the yeah, yeah. Peers. and I do remember when there was a summer vacations and I used to get so much bored because when you go to school you have a routine you interact with your friends Definitely. and you have a bunch of friends which you with which you are playing on but nowadays <coughs> there's this concept of homeschooling and especially so Hajra, let me ask you this one question did you used to bunk the classes as well <laughs> no I just bunked it once and it was such a terrible phase that I was so frightened about bunking it but I never <laughs> did that because the stress was killing me I was like it's better to be in the class rather than bunking it out uh, but nowadays is especially Ali if you see how the schooling and the education curriculum is being changed in the West right so there's so much uh, I think invasion of different I sort believe of concepts there is exactly yes. there is a lot of invasion yes. of the concepts but at the same time there is a lot of evolution as well I mean, yeah, things are progressing, I mean, Muslims, things are changing. Yes, as yeah. a Muslim, a lot of uh, parents, they are reluctant to send their kids to the schools, especially because especially they want their US, terbiyah, if I talk yes, about, yeah. they want their terbiyah to be according to the Islamic paradigm in the first place, right? To talk about it, why homeschooling is important. And, and because Hajra, I must mention that I also have extended uh, family relatives in US, yes. they are living over yes. there, and they are very particular yes. about the education of, of their children. They are yes. afraid about, you know, the invasion of the the culture, yes. the norms, so they yes. prefer homeschooling. Yes, and the wokeness, the concept of the wokeness that has nowadays, I mean, um, invaded every aspect of the very life. So true, very that's true, very so true. Let's talk about the homeschooling and the awareness surrounding it, especially for their parents who are living in the West, what are the facets of it, and broadly speaking, how we can incorporate the Islamic So Hazra, just, just a general question from you, are you in the favor of homeschooling or not? I think Do you it, think it's a good I idea? I think if, if you're living in Pakistan, I'm not in the favor of homeschooling at all because I feel that the 
school is a place like you mentioned it's a place where we interact where we boost our confidence where we gain a lot of friends so it's important that you send your children to the school but and i, I believe mean, it is very important for the mental health of the children as yes, well yes yes so we're going to have this conversation we are very glad that we have been joined by an educationist who happens to be the founder of the bright future homeschooling system and she's also been an alama she did a two year course on that so we are very glad that we have been joined by miss aisha amir assalam alaikum and, and thank you so much for coming to the show, show. wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi how are you this morning i'm doing good alhamdulillah how are you guys what have you alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So, so alhamdulillah. we are so fortunate to have you on our show thank you to having me here today right so aisha yeah. why homeschooling in the first place uh the why homeschooling yes. uh i really the, that you saying why homeschooling uh first of all i i'm being a parent what i i want to speak right so if i like 15 years ago right when i when i go with my education system right my school my college and all entire my life right so what i learn like that time homeschooling and not that that like common right right now it's everyone's know True. especially in pakistan after covid a lot of people know about homeschooling but if you go out of the country because i never been in pakistan and never born in pakistan so it's like uh, i learned so many things and i was when i get married in very young age right oh, in the age of 17 right so i realized in that time when i having my baby first like when i was 19 years old so i realized that uh, so many things that i didn't learn i have to be learn in 17 years old So I was like when it, my child going to grow up right I want to teach him in a different way and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I don't know he's guide me and it's the say, like help of Allah yes. that I get to in America like I find out the, about the homeschooling and I started the homeschooling it's very diff- quite difficult decision for me so I am uh, the first like uh, like so many people that take the education right on or take the like what i can say like montessori diploma or daycare so i just take my daycare you know license and then i take i did my montessori and i feel like it and then start doing a parenting learning because i'm wow, having my child so why because a lot of be, they being a parent but they don't know yes. uh, how to do deal True. with your child the lack of awareness exactly a lot right so this is the reason that's how i come and to and i believe that is the biggest impediment yes. to someone's life yeah and, and i think lot. that it comes to parenting especially in this pakistan mm. because i have grown up in the pakistani society yeah. so it's something that is considered to be very innate so as soon as you it have kids it is very kids, innate yeah. but you know the unfortunate reality is that you know the basics of the parenting they yes. often go ignored of course, and people are not aware that, about that it that is the biggest fallacy and this is something that you know true. dooms the mental yes. health of your child yes. that's very a lot. true and, and i think face uh, nowadays, so many problems in life especially the conversation around human rights yes. generally people yes. are focusing a lot on the rights right so uh, i think the tarbiya that we need to impart on our kids yes, is very different so this is the reason like you know the homeschooling this is important why because that why i really love it what i did for my like in my basement the whole i did the home school, like a school environment you know right. that's what we're saying because you have to give your child like not four hours a day right? right at least and every school that's what they give it four hours a day not more than that education they are rather than that they have play tra- play time they have races like extra activities the True. sports and other the education four hours so i decided right. for my child i was like why i'm going to waste his time right. you know in that age so that's what i did like since morning like eight o'clock that school start and i give him three and a half hour right. and then i can do a lot of things with right. him the quran and tarbiya so tarbiya it's why important tarbiya is called basically is education right but that's called islamic education right right, right? So also miss aisha i want to really ask from you that what are the popular homeschooling methods that are being adopted in the u.s and uh what's your observation about pakistan uh basic uh, you're asking that ski in what in pakistan is basic uh, yes w- w- what, what is the most popular uh, you know homeschooling teaching method t- teaching methods yeah. okay the homeschooling is why it's really uh uh important and teaching methods it's you have to make your own everybody make their own lesson plans like now like if i'm a public school teacher so right. i'm going to make a i'm going to design for 30 kids you know the the design right and then in for homeschooling if you're doing for your child so it's you doing one and one so everybody is it's not like one not a specific i can tell right. you everybody have their own vision own mission so the homeschoolers are doing multiple things i can't tell you one thing that you're asking me right, right. so i can't tell you every mother is doing in in their own way right. because uh, everyone's think like okay i can do two hours of schooling and then i can do this and i can do that and more activities with their child and more curriculum everybody is doing a different curriculum i can't because tell, before like, 
specific you know, coming things, to you know? for the show, I yeah. did a little a research of yeah. my own, and there were some, you know, popular methods of the homeschooling that includes the traditional homeschooling, growth mm. schooling, world schooling, unschooling, and classical homeschooling. Mm. So, can you shed some light on these popular and types and of this also homeschooling? Also, I would really like to ask you. Thank you so much for asking mm -hmm. this, Ali. Uh, about especially because you are living in the West and you've yes. seen how the Western society yes. is developing, yes. right? So, there's a lot of conversation around freedom and liberty and whatnot, yes. right? And there yes. are no divine limitation placed on the yes. concept of the freedom, right? Yes. And uh, like we were talking about, there were encroachment or the erosion of so many values so that many you values. see. Yeah. And uh, slowly you see the seeping in of mm. that to the third world countries, to our country too, right? Uh, so yeah. how do you in that environment when there are no divine limitations placed mm. on the concept of the freedom, how do you raise your child? And how do you make sure that your kid is well versed mm. in the Islamic tarbiyah? Yeah. Uh, that is also our religion. Yes. And we need to revert back to our yes. prophetic exactly. model. The first place, right? Definitely. Exactly. So go ahead, Definitely. Please. It's a really good question. Uh, this is the reason, like, so many parents come every day to me, and I. Th this is the question they bring it to me because they get really scared. True. They're socialized. You know, when the kids are very, the, the school routine that you're saying, like, it's very good, you know. So uh, in a different way, they have, they have friends in their schools, there are more activities, there are different people. They know they're like, they can be a social, mm -hmm. right? So uh, for homeschooling, I think they're, they have, they're doing more than that. More, right. a lot, because right. they have a lot of time to do. Because they they can do a two hours homeschooling, right? And they can split their time for whole day, right. you know? So they, they can do multiple things in, in that way. It's like, if I do two hours, so I c they can play in one hour, and they can rest one hour, and then they can do tarbiya. So this is, we can so balance in our life. So the is more of a flexible schedule. Exactly. And it is yeah. not restricted. It's not that. Right. So right. it's like, uh, and more thing is like about the tarbiya, what I'm saying, right? right? Because in Pakistan, especially, we're thinking like, if you want to be an Islamic, Islamic way, so you have to go to only madaris to learn these things, yeah. right? Mm. Not in the schools. So I think it's, uh, I don't think so. It's it's matter. I, I think I we do have Islam Islamiyat subject in yeah. our curriculum, and yeah. it has been there yeah. for quite some time. And uh, I think till ninth and tenth, and yeah. I think in the first year, second year too, we do have Islamiyat. Yes, so I don't do. think so. Uh, the Tarbiya in Pakistan is such a difficult task. I think as it is in the West, and it was having listening to this very important conversation, and a yes. lot of people, especially yeah. there was a parent who came up and he said that uh, to his son that uh, you're going to make friends in the school, but you're not going to hang out with them. You're going to hang out with the friends from the Islamic he was yeah. living in the Florida and America, <laughs> okay. right? Um, yeah. And this yeah. is the dilemma that a yeah. lot of parents yeah. have to face yes. in order to protect yes. their kids yes. from all of uh, the deviance From invasion of the culture, yes. the yes. religious the deviance, values. The yes. wokeness uh, that is being so much, I mean, forcefully yes. being uh, perpetuated right. in that culture. Exactly. And that is why I feel that there's so many Muslims are moving to the Turkey, they're changing the places yes. and they're making yes. that hijra exactly. in the first place. The same, th this is the reason I moved to Pakistan with my son because Wonderful. I did homeschooling with him, right? So I was like, I'm going to be coming to the Islamic country and uh, it's very good, like, so how old is your son? So uh, my son, he's 15 years old. Oh, mashallah. wonderful. Yeah, mashallah. alhamdulillah. So you know what? Uh, I struggle a lot with him. So this is the reason I moved here because there I have to, that's what he's saying. You have, I have to tell him, no, you have to make the only Muslim friends, you know. Yes. You can't hang out with your non-Muslim friends or something. But I can't, I, I'm not going to limit him, you know. True. I can't do that. But do children, do they resist? Yeah. to parents such commandments. Yeah, and especially when there's so much unrestrained freedom I believe, you know, Ahajra, you cannot uh, keep an eye on your kid 24-7. Of course, of course, yes, of course. Exactly. And, and when they step out from their homes, yes. they're exposed to all yeah. of that yes. environment, yeah. right? You have to teach them. This and is I really believe that it is part of the human nature. Exactly. The more you're going True. to restrict your child, yes from that something you're going to curiosity. prohibit. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes, you exactly. know, the curiosity, it can be catastrophic sometimes. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So no, th this is the, reason, the reasoning I'm saying. You have to balancing, right? The homeschooling, so this is the reason homeschooling is more uh, better than the other school because you can balance in your life. And right. your child know to how to balance your deen and how to balance your... But you uh, know, th the point yeah. that worries me about the homeschooling, it is about the social interaction that, no. you know, there are so many uh, points yeah. that you're kid yeah. is going to miss out no. for instance the <laughs> curricular yeah. activities the sports activities <laughs> the social yes. interaction yes. so the i'm friends, worried about yeah. <laughs> you know the social interaction anxiety yes so do yes. the children uh, experience uh, no. it i think they are more social why because we're doing 
a lot. Sometimes I get crazy. My kids are, and if I, ha I have more kids now because I have my own homeschooling center now. Right. So homeschooling center, I have only four kids in each class. Yeah, and we right? do have the visuals so on the screen. So if you could explain as you know okay. what is okay, happening I can, there. I, I, I can think they will come back again so we'll keep talking. Okay, right. okay. So it's come back again. Yes, okay. yes, yes. yes. Please having the conversation. So yes, uh, yes, this, okay, this is the it. center there. So how many okay, uh, yeah. students do you have in your own home schooling? And, and how much is different from a normal school? Because I think I, I see it as a school, no? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like a school. I have like in each class only four kids. Yeah, I do see the goal. Gappas Three to four. Gappas, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? They, uh, this Big is my annual day and uh, kids are like really excited because uh, I'm running one more school that's called street school. Yeah. Right. And my kids are learning those values also to how to help poor and how to educate them also. Right. So in, uh, in uh, my class, they, this is the reason they did, uh, we did a uh, bake sale right. Right. for the street school right. kids. Right. Also, you know, the state broadcasters, they play a pivotal role in educating the children. For yes. instance, yes. if I talk about New Zealand, Japan, Netherlands, you know, they're state broadcasters. The producers, mm. basically, yes. they are the educators. Yes. They educate about the values. Mm. They educate about the, you know, mm. curriculum. And yes. basically, they only broadcast the education-related content. And I think that is why and we I believe really that, you know, in Pakistan as yes. well, that we are taking initiatives. For instance, Prime Minister Shabash Sharif, he inaugurated mm. the teleschool. He inaugurated Mashallah. the yes. schools on wheels. Yes. So how do you see these initiatives? being taken by the government uh, of Pakistan? Yes, uh, you ask me really that question is like close to, you know, like uh, really close give me to your heart. No, it's really <laughs> close to my heart and give me bruises. Uh, there is the schools a lot and I, trust me, I visit a lot of schools. Uh, the public schools, like that's called in public school outside and government schools in Pakistan, right? So I, I see so many things that teachers are there, but they are not even though tarbiyas i'm not saying about the tarbiya there even though education like even i didn't see anything in there so one time i just go them and ask them you can uh, can you give me a 10 minutes that i can speak with the kids right. so you know what every day you can't believe uh, there is a, a lot of schools are in the street right so i wait uh, wait for them when they're gonna like get out from their school so the on the street we sit on the floor like 70 80 kids right. and we sit there and we do tarbiya with them you can't believe i'm teaching them on the floor we don't they don't care and they right. love also to I come in the last i want yeah. to ask this question from you because you know mental health is something which is very important mm. to me and i'm very mm. vocal about it i mean right. keeping your mental health intact yes. the mental health of your kid intact is yes. very important very so important, how yes. do you uh, ensure in the homeschooling that the mental health is not compromised and the bullying doesn't take and, place and, and do you believe that the mental health crisis is in the first place because we are far away from the spirituality yes yes so you know like mental health this is uh, you you're so close to your child right this is the reason mental health why it's so much issue right now it's you know if your child going to school so many kids are bullying them. You don't know because your child gonna come home, maybe 10 person he gonna tell you what happened exactly. every day, right? If in a homeschooling every time, every minute you are with your child, right? You're not sending him anywhere because in the regular school, you you're gonna come back from school, he go to the tuition, he come back from tuition, he have to go to Cardi, and then after that the f uh, dinner, and that's it, he have to go to and sleep. And how cost so effective is, no is the homeschooling? If yeah. I talk about huh? the cost effectiveness, because you know the private schools in Pakistan, they charge an insane amount hajra. Right. Trust Allah me, Allah, Allah, yeah. it is an insane amount. <laughs> yes, so yes, you tell yes. me that how cost effective is the homeschooling? Huh. The, uh, you can't imagine my school. We have uh, like really 5,500 we charge them. There is no admission fees. There is nothing. And mashallah, mashallah, the, all my kids, you can't imagine. They're, even though if you go to my street school, they speak in, in English. They know the Quran. They know the signs. We relate it with the Quran and we're teaching them in, in English, everything. So it's a, it's a quality of education is the same thing. And my kids going for swimming. We do horse riding. We do archery. Sure. We doing football. We do cricket Wonderful. with them. So in uh, my school timing is from 10 to 2 right so 10 to 2 you think this is the education after that we're doing a lot of things 
you know the my and, and we the wish you best of luck with your homeschooling Allah. and we wish that and and we wish you best of luck for the yes. students also that they exactly. will become a productive I'm citizen I'm so glad that exactly. we had this very important yes. conversation yes. Yes. that we so talked about the homeschooling here. and exactly. also we yes. linked it with the mental health awareness that's as well. very true Inshallah. and thank you so much exactly. Mishaisha for coming thank here you. for having this very important conversation especially regarding the tarbiya and how to incorporate the islamic education into our academia the digital divide yes. and the role of the yes. digital medium in yes. the education as well yes so with that we will say Allah Hafiz. Until next time, it's a goodbye and good morning. Good morning, Pakistan.